Welcome back. So today, uh, this has been a video that has been a long time in coming. I've been working on it for quite a long time, um, just because it's so complicated. This is going to be a super long video because there's just a ton of information. But what I hope to accomplish with this video is to really clarify for everybody out there all the different uh, command control systems that are available from both Lionel and MTH, all the different versions that have come out, what they can do, what they can't do, which systems interchange with, you, with each other, which don't interact with each other, and all the different features and give a clarification so that if you're new to the hobby and you're trying to decide which one do I buy here? Do I buy the original TMCC set, the DCS system, the 990 system, the 993, the Cab 1L and Base 1L, Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, like which system am I using and how do these all interact and what's the difference between all these command control systems? And so this video is going to be pretty intense, but I hope to uh, methodically go through all the systems clarify what's going on with them so that if you are out there and you're trying to make an informed decision on which of these systems to buy or maybe multiple systems to buy like you can see here I pretty much have every single one that's been released uh, you'll have the information you need to make an informed decision and not make a mistake when you're out in the uh, wild there buying all these different systems so that's our goal for this video it's going to be a long video you might have to watch it in chunks but I hope to have all the information uh, that will help clarify all this for everybody so uh, that it'll be a, a much clearer explanation than what I've seen on the forums and things like that where it gets confusing. There's everybody's out there and they got their own opinions on all these systems and which one you should buy, which one you shouldn't buy and all these different types of things and what we're trying to do is just look at them for what they are and what they can do and what you're after on your railroad so that you'll know which of these to actually delve into. So that's our goal and we got a lot of information to cover so let's get right into it. Right, guys so we're going to start at the beginning so we are just going to mention quickly conventional control so conventional control just basically means you're using a transformer like you see here this just is one type there's many different types but this is a basically a transformer that varies the voltage that uh, goes to the track so two wires come from here go to the track varies the voltage up and down and that of course varies the voltage on the motor inside the locomotive and that's what makes it go faster slower uh, or stops and it's very simple uh, type of control that is still in use and uh, viable today. So uh, if you have just a regular conventional locomotive, has no electronics in it, just has a motor, AC motor in it, uh, you can control it with a transformer and it's as simple as that. A lot of the engines today, even though they have electronics in them, you can still control them conventionally if you want to. Now you do lose a bunch of features, but you can still put them on a track, a conventional layout, and just control them using a transformer. So, just keep that in mind uh, um, when we're going through all these different command and control systems. But you may have uh, locomotives that were produced anywhere from, you know, 1902, when really Lionel started in train manufacturing, all the way up to uh, today, depending on the, the engine and what it, what it how it's built, what's in it, and things like that. So, uh, a lot of the uh, collectors that collect post-war uh, trains, which are all, of course, AC uh, electric motors, would use conventional control. And they don't have electronics in them and, and things like that. So does that mean you can't control conventional engines with a remote? Nope, it doesn't. And we'll get to that. But uh, this is the traditional way of controlling locomotives, conventional. And so when you hear that term, you'll know what it means. All right, so now we're going to talk about the first Trainmaster Command Control System that was released. It was called Trainmaster Command, and you're looking at the first engine right here, which was a semi-scale uh, CNO Yellow Belly Hudson, and this was the first TMCC engine. Now it was released uh, in this engine was released in 1995. However, 
The TMCC system was announced in the 1994 catalog, so technically that's its first year, although it wasn't produced or actually sold until the 1995 when the uh, Hudson came out. But uh, this is the first command control system, and we're going to take a look at it and see what it consists of. All right, so when you got your Trainmaster command control system, uh, you got a base, you got a remote, and you got a set of quick start instructions and a control guide. And in the base uh, box, when you opened it up, you basically had the base itself, and then underneath here was a power supply. And we're going to talk about power supplies a little bit later because these are special power supplies. And very simply, you had the receiver base, which is the portion that received the signals from your remote control and then you had the power supply that powers the base. The remote control obviously had batteries and this uh, base connected to the track with one simple single wire that went to the outside rail of the track and that was pretty much all you received in the TMCC set. So let's talk about what TMCC does. Alright, so Trainmaster Command Control basically is a system that sends a signal over the outside rail of the track to electronics that are in TMCC engines to allow control of those engines features and functions like speeding up, slowing down, stopping, reversing, uh, blowing the whistle, ringing the bell, all those different types of functions that are in the TMCC engine. Unlike conventional control where you're varying the voltage on the track, TMCC engines needed a constant 18 volts on the track. So if you were running TMCC engines, you would just set your voltage to your track, whatever your power supply was, to 18 volts, and that's all you needed. And now the engines actually would not move until you actually uh, use the remote to tell them what to do, because the electronics in the engine now control the motor instead of the track varying the voltage. And it's as simple as that. That's all Trainmaster Command Control is. Now this first iteration that came out called Trainmaster Command Control was also uh, nicknamed the Base 1 and Cab 1. And these are going to be very important distinctions when we get further down the line, especially if you're out in train shows and different places trying to figure out what system you're looking at. Um, these de designations will help you distinguish between all these different command systems. So the base one is just the base, obviously, and the remotes were always called CAB, C-A-B is in boy, and it's just CAB 1 because it's the first TMCC system. And if you actually looked at these uh, bases and CABs, they actually have labels on them that tell you uh, kind of uh, what version they are in case visually you don't recognize them because they kind of look similar to each other as we go through all these different systems. All right, so if you want to identify an original Trainmaster uh, Base 1 Cab 1 system, they're very easy. First of all, they're in these black cases. It does say Trainmaster right on the label here. And if you look on the back, it actually says Base 1. Okay, so very easy to identify. Uh, the remote is a gray remote, and it pretty much uh, has these hard-coded buttons here, the red dial and then it has an antenna that extends. Okay, This is the only remote that's like that that has the antenna. So you know you have a CAB1 system. So obviously these are buttons here that did different things with the Trainmaster locomotives. And uh, you notice they're pretty much hard-coded for whatever they are. Front coupler, rear coupler, boost and brake, direction, bell, whistle, and then you had some buttons up here for switches, accessories, routes, trains, engines, you had a uh, 0 through 9 keypad right here, and then there's a halt button right here at the bottom. And then underneath it has some little buttons to set what they call momentum. So these were just different features of the Trainmaster uh, command control system that were built into Trainmaster engines. So this system lasted up to until 2006 when they released the next system that we'll talk about. But Pretty much any engine that you buy that has TMCC on the label, uh, this will run. 
This can also run conventional engines if you add an additional module onto this base called a Power Master. And so what the Power Master does is if you want to run your conventional engines, which again, remember, are only varying voltage up and down, uh, this allowed the remote to do the varying voltage just as if you were using the handle on the um, transformer. Okay, So by using that additional module, you can actually still control conventional locomotives but have a remote in your hand and be able to walk around and not be tied to an actual transformer. So that means that even if you're a conventional operator, you may still want to get a TMCC system because it gives you the freedom of walking around and still controlling your locomotives. And you can do it if you have multiple loops, you can change it to different tracks uh, to control different tracks at different times. So if you're controlling more than one train and things like that. So still good for conventional. This was obviously meant to be able to control command control trains, which because again, you have 18 volts constant on the track when you're in TMCC mode, you could actually have three or four engines on the same loop and just by switching between the engines with the engine button and their corresponding programmed ID number, you could actually control multiple trains at the same time on the same track. And that's the big you know, advantage to the Train Master Command Control System is that you're controlling the individual engines instead of controlling the track. And that's the difference between the old way, the conventional way, and the Train Master Command Control way. And that, for all the systems we're about to talk about, it's the same way. You're now controlling the engine directly and you're not controlling the voltage on the, the track anymore uh, in the old conventional way. So let's talk about who would buy a, a cab one and base one system, the original TMCC system. Well, that could be anybody who's either wants to control their conventional trains remotely or only wants to stick with TMCC engines. And maybe you're not interested in the next generation of engines that we'll talk about called Legacy. And you are basically trying to stay within a budget. You want command control, but you don't want to pay uh, all the higher prices for the newer, more, more advanced electronics with the legacy system. You absolutely can use a TMCC system. And these are readily available on the secondary market. These, of course, are long discontinued by Lionel, but you can get these pretty cheap now on the market um, for about, I don't know, you can find them from anywhere from, depending on if you get a good deal at a train show from, you know, anywhere from $75. Some, you know, if you get a brand new set that's never been opened, maybe all the way up to 200 or something. But you should be in that range and you should be able to easily pick up these uh, systems. And they're, they're not hard to find at all. So very easy to get, very easy to find. So if you just want to delve into command control and you don't want all the necessary the big bells and whistles and you're just uh, controlling TMCC only engines then this will work now one thing you want to make sure when you're buying a used or a cab one system is to look at the power supply this is a really important piece these power supplies even though they look like any other generic power supply you normally find with any other thing that you might buy are not the same they're special internally wired with this ground plug it's very important that you get the right power supply to go with these systems or the signal may not work correctly or may have problems with the signal to your trains and then you'll have all kinds of issues now luckily on the power supplies that came with these uh, original train master systems they actually st say on them uh, base one. It actually clearly is printed on the transformer itself. Uh, there is a, a model number here that you can uh, write down and take with you if you always want to confirm. But if you want to make sure you have the original power supply that came with this, it's not just about the volts and the amps. It's about uh, this little designation where it says base one. Because then you know internally this is wired correctly so that um, you will get this ground signal, which actually uses your electrical a ground wiring of your house uh, to help with the signal. So because of that, you wanna make sure that you get the right power supply. And that is how you can tell you have the right one, or if somebody has switched it out with something else and it actually doesn't go with this base. Um, if you don't get the right power supply, then like I said, you could run into issues. So you wanna make sure that it is the right one that goes with the system. 
and that's how you can easily tell if you have the right one for the first system we're talking about here which is the base one cab one system and again this is called the cab this is obviously the base and it's just one because it was the first system All right, guys, I do want to make a really important note here in this video at this point uh, because I just want to make it clear that when we're going through these systems in this video, we're just kind of talking about each individual system and um, how it was originally designed and what it was designed for. That does not mean, and I can't stress this enough, that does not mean that they're not interchangeable with each other and you can't use certain things together. So, for instance, this TMCC system that we just discussed is uh, it can be used to control legacy engines even though you're not going to get any of the legacy features you know the legacy engines are still command engines and you can still program an ID and you know still get a um, use this if you wanted to with uh, your legacy system and there's actually different ways to do it so you could if you want to add this uh, TMCC system to your legacy system, there are bridges. They're called PowerMaster bridges that you can actually use both together with a special cable. I mean, there, there are all kinds of advanced setups that you can do between all these systems. And we would, could spend you know a whole other video talking about all the different ways that you can set these things up. My goal with this video is just to show each of the, the main control systems and originally what they were designed to do, you know, from the factory when they came out, not necessarily what they could do in the future as newer systems came out and how you could join them all up. Now, if you want to learn all about that stuff, there's lots of stuff online, of course, to find out how you could connect, for instance, a TMCC1 system to a TMCC2 system if you wanted them running simultaneously together or do you just want to control all the legacy and, and uh, TMCC engines you, you, you have with one or the other, right? So there are all different kinds of ways you can get these things to control, uh, you know, engines that they weren't necessarily originally designed for but will work. So I just want to, you know, put that note out there. So because I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of like comments back telling me that you can do this uh, with this system and, and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes when I'm going through these systems, I'm just stating the facts as the system was originally designed with the um, trains that were out at that time, not trains that were uh, coming out after it in the future designed for other systems. So just keep that in mind. There are lots of advanced techniques that you can use. And there are other modules that Lionel made to hook all these systems together with uh, different modules and cables and things like that so they can all work uh, together. So that's just a quick important note as we uh, continue on through this um, video series. Um, so just uh, remember we are doing a very high level overview of all the systems and there are advanced techniques that you can use. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that I am trying to, uh, you know, this video is really geared towards people that are new to the hobby, don't have any systems at all, and are just trying to get an overview of everything. And so, uh, even though you can uh, make all these systems work together, what I'm trying to do is give them an informed uh, piece of information so that they can buy a system that's going to meet their needs going forward not going backwards so in other words if you're coming into the hobby and you're buying legacy engines uh, buying a TMCC command base is going to limit you on what you can do with those engines and obviously it would be better if you bought a legacy base or the new base coming out uh, so I'm trying to give everybody an idea of you know all the different systems but again if you were only running conventional trains then this system here would be a better option and not waste the money on the advanced system so we are not trying to uh, tell everybody exactly how these all can join together in one giant railroad and if you want to have every single control system ever put out by Lionel 
what we're trying to do is, is help people to decide on which system fits them the best without buying multiple systems and having to do all kinds of advanced setup. So, you know, I just want to make that super clear. Um, this would never be an all ending video on every single thing that you can do with all these systems because that would just take multiple videos. So. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the next system that came out from Lionel, and this is called the Lionel Legacy Control System, and this was number 990. And these numbers are gonna be very important because I'm gonna be talking about an expansion set pretty soon, and it's very easy when you're at a show to accidentally pick up the wrong system and think that you now have a legacy system. So we're gonna talk about the differences, but uh, the Lionel Legacy Control System was basically TMCC2. So this is the next iteration of Train Master Command Control. And this system uh, was leaps and bounds ahead of the original TMCC system with the features and functionality and everything that you can do with it. Now, in order to control or use all those features, those brand new features and functionality, you had to have a Lionel legacy engine. So again, it's all about the electronics in the engine itself, not the control system. The control system is just allowing you to use those functions and features that are available in the engine. So it's very important to know what kind of engine you have and what features and functionality are part of that engine. And that's, that's how you know which system can control what. Now, the nice thing about the uh, legacy system is that it was backwards compatible with all TMCC engines. So not only could it control Lionel legacy engines, it could control Lionel TMCC engines, the ones we just talked about with the uh, Base 1 Cab 1 uh, original Train Master Command system. So you could actually uh, replace your original TMCC system with this new Lionel legacy control system. So let's take a look at it. All right, so when you got your line of legacy control system, you got obviously an instruction manual and you got the, what they call the legacy base. Um, you can also call this the cab two base if you want to, uh, but this, they kind of named it just the legacy base. Okay, and then you got a brand new remote, much more advanced than the original one. We'll talk about that in a second. But this is the Cab 2 remote now, instead of the Cab 1. You got a power supply for your base. There was a little antenna that came with it because the base has an antenna on it. Uh, you got some programming modules right here for the base and for the remote. You got a set of rechargeable batteries now. And that is one difference between the original cab one and this cab two is the original one it was not uh, didn't have a rechargeable base. And then you got a special cable here. It's a Y cable that would connect your legacy base and your command base if you wanted to. So you had a bunch of different options here when you got this system. So uh, let, let's go over to the layout and we'll take a look at this 990 system. So like I said before, this is the new base and the new remote. And so base two, cab two remote. And you can see it fits into the base right here. It's got some contacts for charging. So any rechargeable batteries you put in here would be recharged automatically. So that was a new feature and functionality, obviously. But you can see from the remote, it's much different than the original one, right? We have actually LCD screens at the top and in the center here. Uh, there's some of the same buttons, but then there's additional buttons and we have sliders and different types of buttons. We still have the red uh, dial for uh, our trains going up and down. But, you know, basically uh, a lot of the buttons are the same physically. Uh, now we have these buttons going across the top which go with soft buttons across the LCD and they change based on engine. So this is a much more advanced remote and obviously it can do a lot more things. The thing about this remote is that each engine could have different features and these screens here would change based on the engine that you're running. So if I'm running one engine that has a specific feature, I might see a different icon down here than another engine. A lot of the icons are the same because the engines have the same features, but it just depended on the engine. And that was the big difference between this system. It was a much more advanced system. You could do a lot more. There were a lot more features coming out on the legacy engines. 
And because of that, you could do a lot more things, <clears throat> including one of the biggest one, which was this slider right here, which was used for the quillable whistle. So you, instead of just blowing a whistle, you could vary the pitch of the whistle. You had a train break where you could actually put a brake and slide it down and it would break the train, right? Rather than just using the dial to slow it down. <clears throat> um, you could link trains together. And then under these menus, they had different options. As you hit each menu, it would take you to a different set of icons and do different things. I'm not going to go over the remote because we could spend a whole video just on the legacy system by itself. But suffice it to say that this was a much more advanced system that went with much more advanced locomotives. The other difference is this one runs at a different uh, frequency as I told you before. So that means that I cannot use my Command 1 remote or my Cab 1 remote with this base. They won't talk to each other. And I cannot use my legacy remote with the base one. It will not talk to it, right? There are two different totally type of systems. But having said that, this remote can control legacy engines or TMCC engines. And the way it did that is under each engine as it was programmed in here, you could actually change the mode that it ran in. So it, when you went to the different modes and you scrolled through them, you can see this is in legacy mode right now, but I could change it to TMCC mode or cab one mode. So you were able to still control your older engines with the new legacy system. So it was backwards compatible. Now, so if you were, if you have some TMCC engines and you're interested in controlling them and you also want to get into the legacy engines, this would be the system to go for. Uh, right because it controls both um, it can do the same thing also if you again set it up correctly and you technically could control on a separate loop conventional engines just by upping and, and downing the uh, power right if it's connected correctly however um, <clears throat> For the most part, people that bought legacy systems were interested in controlling their legacy engines, and that's what it was for. So this system was around, again, starting in 2006 all the way up until the 2021 catalog. So that's just two years ago. And even though it was in the 21 catalog, they actually, I don't think, were even producing them at that time. Uh, couldn't get the parts for them, and they were kind of obsolete at that time. So because of that, you really can't... Um, <clears throat> find these systems they're very difficult to find and once they discontinued them and they've skyrocketed in price on the secondary market so they're running anywhere uh normally from seven to two thousand seven hundred to two thousand dollars i paid 299 dollars for this system you're looking at right here originally when i bought it and i think the last prices in the catalog were around like 400 from retail from lionel Okay, so you can see how in demand they are and popular. And there's another reason they're in demand, and we're going to talk about that coming up also. But uh, this system was at the time, and still is right now, the most advanced with a remote control. And it controls, like I said, all legacy engines and everything back to TMCC. So this would be the ultimate system, except it's impossible to find at a reasonable price right now. If you don't mind paying the extra money, then you're getting a fantastic system that you can control pretty much everything that Lionel has produced from the TMCC era up to today with the legacy or the TMCC engines. Now we have some other uh, control systems coming up after this we need to talk about. So uh, this cannot control every single type and we'll talk about why that is. But for the most part, for all the main uh, legacy engines that are produced, even today, this control system will control it. Okay, so let's talk about what if you had a uh, the first generation uh, base one cab one system, and then you bought this base two cab two system to move up to legacy. Could you still use your old system? And uh, the answer is, uh, yes, you possibly can if you have the right connections and cables. So the legacy system actually came with a, a cable that has three connectors on it. It's a Y cable. And you can actually connect different bases to it to make it uh, communicate with those bases 
and then the signal comes out through a single base, a legacy base to the track. And what that lets you do is uh, continue to use your cab one system if you wanted to just to have the remote and still be able to control your TMCC trains through that. So basically what it did is it allowed you to not have to buy a secondary legacy remote if you wanted to have more than one remote, say you had more than one person that you wanted to have, be able to run trains at the same time. You could still use your old uh, system if you use this cable. Now, honestly, uh, at the time that these systems were released, uh, what you could do is you could buy what they called a 993 system, which was an expansion set, which looked identical to what you're seeing right here, except for one difference. There were no tr uh, electronics in the base for transmitting signals to the track. It was just a base for charging and another uh, legacy cab 2 remote, exactly like this one, that you could use on your system and then you would have two remotes on your system so it looked kind of like this you can see I have one here and there's another one over here so you have the 990 system here and then you've got the 993 over here which this is an expansion remote uh, system that you could buy to just get another remote that had a charging base with it so you could keep both remotes charged and control your trains on your layout with more than one person so each person could have their own remote and then each remote of course can control multiple legacy or TMCC trains on the layout so you could, could have all kinds of trains running depending how big your layout was and that's an important distinction so let me show you the box for that one all right so this is the uh, Lionel Legacy number 993 expansion set if you look at it, it looks identical to the other box. You can't tell the difference except for this number right here and the, the actual model number on it, right? So if you weren't familiar with these numbers, 990 or 993, you may see this at a show, figure, hey, it's a legacy system, I can grab this and I'm out the door. And you may think you got a really good price because it's not as expensive. And that the reason is, is because it's really not a full legacy system, it's an expansion set. And so what an expansion set gives you, if you notice, is it kind of looks the same, but not exactly. So you get a manual just like before, and you're gonna get a base, you're gonna get a remote, some batteries, but if you notice, you don't have that cable. You also don't have all the different modules. Remember, there were four modules before, and now there's only this one. And you do get a power supply just like before. So it looks very similar to the 990 system, but the difference is this base has no transmitting control. It doesn't have an antenna on it, and it's just a charging base to charge the remote. The remote itself is identical to the 990 remote. They're both the same exactly. And this does connect to the legacy base on the 990 system. But this base here is what the difference is. This base only has electronics for charging and it has no electronics or database in it to hold and store your engine data or transmit to the track. And that's the difference between the 990 and the 993 system. But people bought the 993 system so they could get another remote and a charging base to go with it. And that, that's what its purpose was. So is that a bad thing? And should you not buy a 993? Well, we are gonna talk about uh, a little later. We're not quite there yet. We've got another control system in between here. But we're gonna talk about the control system that is about to be released from Lionel. And there could be a reason why you do want to buy a 993 expansion set. So we'll talk about the reason why you might want it. And so if you see one out in the show, you might want to grab one. Uh, again, the 990s are the ones that are not necessarily hard to find, but the most expensive markups right now in the secondary market. The 993s are also marked up pretty expensive not quite as high as the 990s because obviously they're just the remote but there's a reason why people are wanting these uh, these systems and so we'll we will get into that in uh, probably a little bit after the next control system and the reasons for that um, as you can see I have a lot of brand new uh, systems here and that is because I was very familiar with how Lionel does things 
um, they released these things in batches. So these are not always readily available. Even when they were manufacturing these systems, it could be sometimes two, three years before they'd get the next batch in that you could actually buy one. So when these things started coming out from Lionel, I always bought extras. So I have a lot of brand new unopened legacy systems, TMCC systems, pretty much all of them that I bought doubles of or triples of depending what it is to have extra systems um, in case you know something happened to mine and I couldn't get one because they currently weren't being produced. Now that they've all been discontinued now it's even uh, nicer that I have these extras on hand. So. Uh, all right, so that's the 993 system, and that is pretty much the legacy system up to this point. Um, and now we're going to move on to the next control system that Lionel released. We want to talk about the um, power supply for this system also. So this power supply is different. Obviously, it's a lot bigger. Um, if I zoom out a little bit here, you can see it's a lot bigger brick than the one that came with the uh, original Cab 1 Base 1 system. This one is also marked clearly on the transformer. So again, if you're buying one of these in the secondary market, if you look on the label on the transformer, it actually says TMCC2. So that is the train master uh, command cab and base to transformer and you can you know kind of again there's a part number on here that's always going to be the same and you see the volts and the amps and everything and by the way I'll put this all at the end of the video so you can clearly see all this stuff I know sometimes the the camera goes out of focus but we'll we'll get all this at the end everything will be sort of summarized at the end of this video of everything we talked about uh, but this is another way you can tell if you have the right power supply that goes with this base. It actually is marked TMCC2. Right, now we're off to the next system. And this is called the Legacy Cab 1L command system. So now we're back to Cab 1 again. I thought we were past that. We went from uh, Cab 1, the original TMCC system, to Cab 2, which is the legacy control system. Now we're going back to Cab 1. What's the deal? So what Lionel did is uh, they got, I guess, a lot of feedback and they offered a new legacy system. So this is a legacy system, operates on the same uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency as the uh, you know the legacy system I just showed you and what they did is they offered this more economical system it was uh, less expensive and obviously it's using the same basic remote as the original command control system there were a lot of people that didn't necessarily want to deal with all the complexity and all the advanced features of the new legacy system so they they wanted the original one, but they wanted to be able to control the newer legacy engines. And so Lionel came out with what they called the Legacy Cab 1 uh, command system. And that system consisted of what you see right here. It looks very familiar to what we saw before, which you have this base, and then you have a remote, right? And then you're going to have a power supply that goes with this. So what happened here is they did the exact same um, format, right? Same shape and everything, but there's a difference, right? So when you're at a show and you're looking at these systems, you want to make sure that if you want to get a legacy version of this, it's this navy blue color, because that's one of the distinguishing characteristics of it. Otherwise, it looks the same. It also has the actual label on it that actually says Legacy Base 1L. And the L stands for legacy. So remember, before it was just base one, now it's base one L for legacy. And that's the difference. It's still the same base. It still connects with one wire to the track, just like before. So everything's still the same as far as that goes. It's just that this is a legacy signal now coming out of here. And the same thing with the remote. So if you look at the remote, it looks identical to the other one, except there's a couple small differences. Obviously, it's a navy blue color, just like the other one. The buttons are identical to the original Cab 1 remote. Same thing with the little buttons underneath here for the momentum. But you notice there's no antenna at the top here. They took off the physical antenna and now it has an internal antenna that's stronger. So they got rid of that. And then also at the top here you can actually see it actually says Legacy Cab 1 L. 
So it's still cab one, base one, except it has the L on the end, and that means it's now a legacy version, and it can communicate with legacy engines. So what that means is this, again, backward compatible. This can still control TMCC, the original TMCC engines, and it can now control legacy engines, and it can control some of those legacy features. Can it control every single one? No, but it can control most and all the major ones, including the quillable whistle, and that was a big thing. That was one of the things that um, a lot of the guys wanted, that they wanted a more simple remote, a cheaper system, but still not lose the quillable whistle, which has probably been one of the more famous fa favorite features of all the uh, legacy features that have been added to engines is the quillable whistle. Uh, so they were able to do that with this. So you can use, you can do a lot of legacy uh, features with this. And again, it has the same zero through uh, nine keypad on here uh, to run different functions. You can see it's those same buttons you saw sort of on the legacy uh, remote that had those same categories, right? It's just that you don't have any LCD screen. Uh, you can't program engines in a certain way. The engines are, you know, whatever they are. And you can obviously uh, assign them IDs and that kind of stuff. But So there are some limitations to it. But this allowed uh, people to, you know, run their legacy engines with a lot of legacy features. And um, you could, you know, um, still control your old TMCC engines and still control conventional if you have the additional uh, module that hooks onto this you could still do that also so this is also completely backward compatible with uh, all the engines up to this point in time so this was uh, from 2013 to 2021 but again the 21 catalog I don't think these were coming out at that point the supply had stopped so um, the sets themselves were uh, stopped and so it's a, a, a much shorter period of time for the legacy cab 1l command system than the other systems they they ran a long time this one didn't run as long and because of that trying to get a full system a base and remote uh, is very hard very difficult for this particular system and you're probably gonna pay a premium price for it if you do find one um, now this base is discontinued uh, as of 2021. That was the last catalog. And the remote is still being produced. And you're probably scratching your head, why would they do that? And we will tell you why they're going to do that in a couple minutes. But just so you know, you cannot get the base anymore or the kit, the set of the two. But you can buy the remote separately. And as a matter of fact, a Lionel just released a run of these in the beginning of this year. So um, by the time we get to the end of this video, you may find a reason why you want to buy one of these now, even if you can't use it right away. Uh, because again, like I told you before, Lino runs things in batches. And uh, by the time the other piece that you would use this with comes out, you may find that you can't get these anymore. And so um, I did buy a couple of these uh, ahead of time just so I had them, one for extras and then also uh, for things that are about to be released. But um, that is what the difference is between the cab one and the cab one L. So you, you're going to hear all these terms all the time that people use and people get confused by them. And that's what they're referring to. So this is just really an upgraded uh, original TMCC system now that has legacy in it. And um, the nice part about this is that you can use this remote, this uh, cab 1L remote with the legacy system I just showed you the more advanced system so because they're using the same frequency this will actually talk to the legacy base so you don't even need this this is another reason why Lionel is still producing these so if you wanted to add some more remotes to your layout and you know they discontinued the 993 expansion set and they don't make the legacy system anymore you could still get more remotes because this is the one remote they are still making it's the only remote they currently will uh, be making and you could add this to your legacy system your currently legacy system now you don't get all the fancy LCD screens and everything obviously but you'd still have another remote that somebody could use to control some trains through your legacy base 
So um, I know it's starting to get confusing probably, but there because there's a lot of terms and, and we're using them interchangeably, but a lot of these systems will work together and they're backwards compatible. All right, so let's talk about identifying the base. So same thing, I told you about the color, but again, if you look on the back of the base and you actually look at it, it actually says base 1L legacy command base. So again, if you're at a train show, you can't remember what I said in this video and you're like, is that the right one? Obviously it says legacy on the front, it says it on the back and it actually says base 1L and that's your, you know, obviously the way you can tell. Another feature of the base, uh, the legacy um, cab 1L command system is the base uh, actually has a channel select on it, okay? Now, the regular uh, original TMC system did not. You couldn't change channels, but because this is 2.4 gigahertz, there's a lot of things in your home that may use that, like cordless phones and everything else, and this lets you actually change the channel. And you can select it just like you do on your legacy system, where you have channels one through nine that you can set it to and change it to a different channel. Obviously the same thing happens with the uh, remote controller. So it actually says Cab 1L legacy remote controller. So these are very easy to identify, but the color is the main thing. It's in this uh, sort of this navy blue color, all right? So let's do the same thing that we did before and let's just talk about the power adapter because again um, there are special power adapters for these command systems so you uh, can make sure that you're getting the right one if you are buying this on the secondary market okay so the power adapter that comes with the uh, legacy cab 1l system is actually not marked in any specific way that says tmcc or tmcc2 it just has an AC adapter. It does have a very special model number, that MKA number you see there. Uh, and of course the voltage out and the milliamps and stuff like that. So this one's a little harder to identify uh, as having the correct adapter unless you had a picture of this on your phone. And by the way, you can find this out on Lionel's website because they have the part listed out there. Even though it's discontinued, you can't get it anymore. They do have it out there. Uh, with a picture that you could keep on your phone and then um, you would know you have the correct adapter to go with it. However, there is uh, some good news related to the Cab 1L command system or I should say the getting the power adapter for the base 1L and that is that originally when these systems came out Lionel had an issue with the uh, base 1Ls having some weak signal problems and it turned out to be the power supplies and so what they did is they started replacing some of the power supplies for people having issues and what they sent them was a legacy base power supply so the power supply that I just showed you before for the, that comes with the legacy system the 990 or the 993 bases that same power supply will work with the base 1L. And I have that been, that's been confirmed by Line L. I have that confirmed from their support department. And in actuality, when they replaced the power supplies, they replaced, they sent the uh, customers the legacy power supply to replace the one that came with the base 1L originally for the people that were having issues. So, what the good news is about that is is the legacy power supplies Lionel does have in stock and you can actually get a power supply for your base 1L what that means is if you see a base 1L out at a train show and it's missing its power supply because maybe the box is gone and all they have is the base and maybe the remote or maybe just the base whatever it is and you're like, well, I can't use this. I don't have a power supply. Guess what? You do have a power supply. Because all you have to do is either find a used um, legacy-based power supply, or you can go on Lionel's website and order a brand new one, and you will have a power supply that works with that. And I know this for a fact because I actually have, for my uh, base 1L that you see right here, I am using a legacy uh, power supply with it. So... Um, this base 1L, like I said, these are very uh, difficult to find, okay? 
So this Space 1L that you see right here, I found on the secondary market. Um, and it was used and it was really cheap, but it didn't come with anything. It didn't come with a remote or the power supply. Uh, it just came with what you see right there. The remote I bought separately because remember I told you these have been released by Lionel and they're out there right now in stores. And all I did was then I ordered a brand new legacy power supply, legacy based power supply off Lionel's parts website and uh, use that and it works perfectly. I'm using this up on my standard gauge layout. I just have it down here right now for this video, but I'm using it upstairs on the standard gauge layout for the TMCC standard gauge engines and I will be able to control some legacy engines on the upper loop that I'm gonna have a uh, five rail track on that I can run O gauge trains. So uh, that's why I kind of uh, picked up this one. So that is the good news. So in this particular case, there is a power supply that you can swap and use uh, instead of the original one that came with it and it works and it won't damage the unit. All right guys, so now we're gonna move on to the next generation of control systems. And so in 2013, Lionel introduced the Lion Chief system. And in 2014, the following year, Lion Chief Plus. So we're gonna talk about those two first, and then we're gonna talk about a third Lion Chief uh, system separately. So first we're just gonna talk about Lion Chief. So that was the first uh, system that came out. Now this system is much different than what we've been talking about with the command control systems. So we're gonna go back a little bit and talk about the traditional sets. So the ready to run sets. And what those are, if you're not familiar with those, are sets that are prepackaged, ready to go. Something you would buy for a kid for Christmas that had the track, the transformer, had the locomotive, the cars. Everything was in the kit basically where you could set up a train set for Christmas, right? And that those are ready to run sets. These are not scale models. They're just sort of more like toy-like sets just for kids to run trains. So. Uh, traditionally, Lionel gave you a transformer and you controlled it conventionally like we talked about in the first part of this video on how to just use a transformer handle to vary the voltage up and down and run your trains and that was pretty much it. So Lionel decided to advance that in the ready to run sets to make it a remote control type of set for kids. So we're, they're advancing it to make it more fun, easier to set up. There were no wires to work with and everything on these new ready to run sets and they called it Lion Chief. And the way they worked is, you have one right here. This happens to be the mystery machine set right here. But the way the Lion Chief sets worked is they came with a dedicated remote, okay? And that remote had a very specific engine number on it right here that matched the number on the train right here. And you can see it's a very simple remote. It basically has a speed control at the top here, reverse forward. Uh, there's a bell button, there's a whistle or horn button, and there's some crew talk on this one, okay? The earlier ones were even uh, a little simpler. And then it has an on and off switch on the side for the remote. And these were RF frequency or radio controlled, and they were paired with the actual engine itself. So this remote does not work with any other engine except the mystery machine. And so each one of these ready-to-run sets came with their own engine and remote. And so you can see I have another one here. This is the uh, Hogwarts set, and that has its own separate remote. And so these were a specific to each engine. This remote could only be used with that particular engine. And the Lion Chief sets basically eliminated the whole setup of having a transformer having to hook up wires between a transformer and the track. They came with a, just a simple plug-in power supply in the wall that you plugged into the wall, and then the other one plugged into a special track section, and then it provided 18 volts on the track, and then all you did was put your engine on, and then you had your remote, had batteries in it, and you just controlled your engine. So this is totally different type of technology and separate from what we've been talking about with the command control systems, where it's just a simple radio frequency remote that connects with this particular engine and they can control it. 
So if you had two separate engines, like I have this one, the Mystery Machine and the Hogwarts, if I had both of these on the track, I could technically control them separately with each remote. So if I, if there were two kids running trains, each one could control the um, each individual engine with their own remote on the same track at the same time. So that was a big, big jump for the traditional ready to run sets uh, from the old traditional way. And these had sounds and, and, and uh, all kinds of things that went with them. So they were much more advanced and just cooler sets for kids. And it brought kids into the command control or the remote control, I should say, environment where uh, no longer did you have to sit by a, a transformer. You could walk around and have a little remote in your hand and control your trains. And that's what Lion Chief uh, was when it came out. Now, you cannot run Lion Chief, the original Lion Chief, uh, radio frequency engines by conventional control. I can't control these engines by varying the track voltage. Uh, they could only be controlled when the track voltage was 18 volts and they could only be controlled by these remotes and that was it. And there's some confusion about these because uh, they still make Lion Chief uh, level engines but now the newer ones have Bluetooth in them and you can control them a separate way uh, without using the actual dedicated remote that came with the actual engine. However, you got to be very careful when you're talking about Lion Chief because these early engines didn't have Bluetooth in them. So you couldn't control them with Bluetooth. They were a simple radio frequency um, connection between the remote and the actual locomotive itself. So it always depends on the year that the engine was made. Now, if you look at the boxes of any of the new stuff, the Lion Chief stuff, they all have Bluetooth uh, on the outside of the boxes. So they have Bluetooth control in them now, whereas the older ones were the radio frequency. Okay, And so that you have to keep that in mind uh, when you're buying these at the train shows to know what you're actually buying. And if you don't know, you actually can go and find a list of all the engines that originally uh, were sort of radio frequency ones. And even the radio frequency ones, you'll see when we get to another remote we're gonna talk about, not all of them can be controlled by uh, this universal remote we're gonna talk about because of the generation they were, the original generation, and the firmware didn't support it. So there's a little bit of a sort of a disconnect with the Lion Chief engines and uh, they can be very confusing as far as what can control what, what you can control them with basically. Now the Lion Chief engines will always come with their own dedicated remote but whether you can control them with Bluetooth or not or whether you can control them with this universal remote we're going to talk about that depends on when it was manufactured and it's as simple as that. Um, the newer ones, of course, all can be controlled by the newer technologies, so anything coming out today. But the older ones, the original ones, way back when, in 2013, uh, when they came out, uh, not all of them may be able to be controlled by those other technologies. And that's all really uh, Lion Chief was. And then the following year, they added an extra sort of level to Lion Chief called Lion Chief Plus. And all Lion Chief Plus really did is add a couple extra features onto the engines that the regular ones didn't have. So had some more um, lighting features, had uh, some smoke on the steam engines, had electrocouplers, and uh, the Lion Chief Plus also added speed control. Uh, so it had some nice features added to it, but one of the biggest uh, things was that you could run a Lion Chief plus engine conventionally. It had a switch on the bottom of the locomotive that you could flip and then you could actually take a Lion Chief plus engine and you could actually just run it with your transformer conventionally if you wanted to. So you had the choice of running it conventionally or you had the choice of running it uh, with the remote that came with it. So you had kind of two choices uh, with it. And um, the newer ones again on the Lion Chief uh, Plus, uh, which we're going to talk about the next generation, also have the blue, Bluetooth control and everything. So Lion Chief Plus, 
is no longer made anymore. That line has been discontinued. So we've got two Lion Chief lines now. This original one called the Lion Chief, and then they have the next one we're going to talk about, which is Lion Chief Plus 2.0, which is really just the next iteration of Lion Chief Plus that has more features on it. And one of those features now on all the engines is Bluetooth, uh, just like all the current Lion Chief ones also have Bluetooth in them also. So, but this is an older one, and I believe, uh, I'd have to check the box, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this one is a Lion Chief only, and it has to be used with the RF remote, and I, I don't think I can use Bluetooth on this one. I can't remember. Uh, it, it may, depending on the year, um, I'd have to go check to make sure it actually uh, has Bluetooth. Um, it would, uh, usually on the bottom of the locomotives, it will tell you if they have Bluetooth. Actually, I can see it right there. There's the little Bluetooth sticker. So this one is one of the later ones that I could control with Bluetooth, and we're going to get to that uh, control next. But So this one right here uh, works with its frequency remote, and I could use Bluetooth to control that one also. But again, remember, the earlier ones, the, the first generation ones, they didn't necessarily have Bluetooth in them, so you have to be careful that... Um, uh, you may or may not be able to control them with Bluetooth. You're going to have the sticker on the bottom or on the box that's going to have the Bluetooth symbol, and that will tell you if it is controllable. All right, so the next system we're going to talk about is the LCS Wi-Fi system that goes along with the iCab app. And what this was was a Wi-Fi module you could add on to any legacy system. So whether it be the Base 2 uh, legacy system or the Base 1L legacy, you could get this Wi-Fi module. Um, it came with a cable, a special adapter cable that connected to the serial port of the base, and then it came and split into a power supply and then the little uh, PDI cable that plugged into the Wi-Fi module. So what this let you do is use an app on your iPad uh, or phone, and it was really meant for the iPad because uh, it has a huge amount of uh, features in it for like doing routes and things like that. And you could actually have pictures of your actual uh, track plan on the iPad and control switches and things like that. But it was all part of the layout control system, and this module allowed that app to connect to the base, and you'd be able to use. Uh, you know, go through your legacy system controlling your legacy components with the app. So you needed the you needed some type of legacy command base, you needed this Wi-Fi module, a cable, and then you needed the app, and this was their control. Now, in this particular case, uh, what this would be able to control would be both TMCC and legacy engines. So let's go take a look at the app. So the iCab app went along with that Wi-Fi module I just referenced, and it's the only thing it would connect with. So it was really meant for the iPad, and uh, when you did things like routes and stuff, you could actually see your track plan here with different routes, like a yard or something, and then control it through the uh, app, through the Wi-Fi module, and that connected to your legacy base, command base. So I don't know if this really took off that well. I like the LCS system. I have it on my layout, but... Um, as far as using the iCab app to control everything, um, it didn't really pan out uh, that well. Um, even with the routes, you couldn't get your whole layout on there, so it was kind of cool. And as you can see, it has all the different um, controls that you would have on your legacy remote. One thing it did have, though, is like um, you can do either TMCC or legacy trains with it. And you could also uh, have a roster set up. Put things in alphabetical order. You could take pictures of your engines and put them in there so you had pictures of them when they showed up at the top. So it did have a lot of cool stuff because it was an app. To control it you had to drag the slider for speed and stuff like that so a little clunky but um, you know it's sort of been out there languishing and um, now of course starting in 2022 catalog the Wi-Fi module is no longer available and that's because of the uh, system that is about to be released that we'll talk about at near the end of this video but you know at the time this was all that was available to control trains with an app we still haven't didn't get the lion chief bluetooth app yet 
and we were just using the Wi-Fi module to control the trains and that's the way they did it. So I mentioned this just so everybody knows about it and it technically is still a viable option if you're not going to go forward with any more advanced systems and you do want to just control your uh, trains through the Wi-Fi module you can still find these Wi-Fi modules um, they were obviously uh, made up until last year I'm not sure when the last batch came through from Lionel but they're out there uh, even brand new in some of the dealer stores and stuff like that and you can grab one of those and add it to your um, any legacy system that you have where it's the cab one uh, excuse me the base 1L or uh, the base 2 and you can uh, with a special cable just add on Wi-Fi and then you'll be able to control your trains there is a second benefit from the Wi-Fi module which is updating things so it makes it a lot easier so uh, you do get that extra benefit but its main purpose was this which is to be able to control the trains uh, from the app you know, on your layout and really this was the first app control for trains that Lionel came out with uh, the next one you'll see is the next generation and this is strictly Wi-Fi by the way no Bluetooth or anything like that and that's all it really was uh, so you may hear the term iCab app and that is different uh, than the Lion Chief app or the final app we're going to talk about at the end of this video so there are multiple apps, different different ones do different things, and this happens to be the first one that was released called the iCab app. All right, so our next uh, control system we're gonna talk about is the one you're seeing right here, and this is called the Universal Remote. And if you look at it, it looks very similar to the Lion Chief. Uh, remotes that I was showing you for that are de dedicated to very specific engines however um, what happened in um, 2016 is Lionel released this brand new what they call universal remote and its purpose was that if you had a whole bunch of uh, Lion Chief or Lion Chief Plus engines that instead of having all these separate remotes you could control up to three different engines uh, simultaneously with a single remote and um, the reason was you know people were buying these Lion Chief uh, engines they were you know a little cheaper than the big legacy ones and so they were pretty popular and the and the problem is people had all these remotes and they didn't like it so they came out with the universal remote so this remote has both RF and Bluetooth in it so it has both um, uh, types of transmitters in it and it um, originally when it first came out in 2016 on the first version of the f software firmware it could only control Lion Chief second generation and above engines so it couldn't control the original first generation Lion Chief engines you still had to use their dedicated remotes for those engines and they actually put a list out on the support site to tell you which engines it would not control that is not the case anymore so they did a firmware uh, software upgrade to the remote and these remotes can be upgraded so they have a little updater tool in your iPhone or iPad that you can use to update the software and what happened is they added full support for all Lion Chief and Lion Chief Plus uh, engines going forward. So at this point, if you get one of these remotes brand new from Lionel, um, it will be able to control everything. So you'll be able to control um, the original Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, Lion Chief Plus 2.0. You can even control legacy engines with this because uh, as long as your legacy engine has Bluetooth in it and um, you won't get all the features of course but it actually still can control all the locomotives now the other thing it can do that uh, was added in 2019 was you can actually if you wanted to using the Lion Chief app that I just showed you a couple minutes ago you can use that app to control original Lion Chief engines because remember the original Lion Chief engines were RF frequency only they don't have a Bluetooth module inside those engines so even though this uh, 
universal remote has Bluetooth in it, right? Let's say it only had Bluetooth. I wouldn't be able to control those engines, and I can't control them with the app. And suppose you don't want to use this. Suppose you would rather use the app, and you like it better than the actual uh, universal remote. What you can do is put it in hotspot mode on in the app, and because this has a hotspot mode now, what will happen is the app will communicate with this universal remote and the universal remote will send RF signals out to your original Lion Chief or Lion Chief Plus engines that don't have Bluetooth in them. So it's kind of like a <clears throat> you're skipping a stone, right? You're jumping over to from the app to this and then this to the engine. So even though the app is Bluetooth and it's uh, still controlling your engine, it's doing it because the Bluetooth is controlling this and then this is sending an RF signal out to the Lion Chief engine because that's all the engine has in it. It doesn't have Bluetooth. So that was kind of cool that they added the hotspot so now that if you wanted to, using the Lion Chief app, you could control all the different Lion Chief engines and you didn't have to uh, use the app for some engines and then use the universal remote for other engines. And the instructions walk you through how you do that. There's um, a series of steps that you do to put this in the right mode and then in the Lion Chief app select the hotspot and then it'll work and it'll work just like as if the uh, engines had Bluetooth in them. So pretty cool and it's pretty cool that this can control pretty much any engine now uh, that's out there um, from the you know Lion Chief uh, on up. Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, Lion Chief Plus 2.0 and Legacy. Okay. The one thing it cannot control are legacy engines without the Bluetooth module or TMCC engines. Obviously it can't do that and it, it can't control conventional engines. So, But uh, another uh, sort of control system that Lino released to sort of fill another gap that was happening because of this new line of all these Lion Chief engines. So. I think the Lion Chief uh, lines are the ones that started all the sort of confusion and everything because if you think about it, we started with uh, the TMCC, the original command control line, and then it went to the Legacy, and the Legacy was backwards compatible so it can control all the engines going back, um, and it, including uh, conventionals if you had the uh, Power Master, the additional module, right? So it could do all that. But then uh, when Lionel moved to the um, Lion Chief lines, right, there was totally different type of technology. And I don't think they were expecting it maybe to take off as well as it did. The original starter sets, which were just the RF frequency sets, um, were made just for kids, for starter sets. They weren't made for collectors and uh, people like us that are maybe have large collections and stuff like that. Um, so having just a single remote RF frequency to those engines was fine. But when Lion Chief Plus came out and it had all these cool extra features on it, speed control and everything else, uh, some of the collectors were like, hey, I like these and they're not as expensive. They're a lot cheaper and I can get some cool engines. So they started buying them up. And then, uh, of course, then we got to Lion Chief Plus 2.0, which advanced it even further. And so now, at this point, right, uh, collectors were like, I want to be able to control all these things without having to use all these individual remotes. So they came out with this uh, as one of the solutions. And of course, when you get to the Lion Chief Plus uh, two O's, those are command control, so they can be controlled by your normal legacy uh, system. So that was it. That was it for the universal remote. But if you pick one of these up at a train show, just keep in mind that the firmware did change from the original ones to, to ones they're selling today brand new. So what you want to do is make sure to get so that you can control all your different engines and have all the features is make sure you get the updater tool on your phone or iPad or tablet. And go ahead and update your firmware on your remote to bring it up to date and then you'll have all the features that you'll be able to control all the Lion Chief lines. So if you buy one of these at a show and you take it home and it won't control your Lion Chief engine, it's because it's not updated with the latest uh, software. 
So just update it and you'll be set. And then you'll have all the latest features uh, that I just uh, talked about. All right, so now we're moving on to the next control option that we have, and that is an actual app on your phone or tablet. And in 2017, Lionel introduced the Lion Chief Bluetooth app. And really all this does is control any engine from Lionel that has the Bluetooth module in it. So that could be a Lion Chief engine, a Lion Chief Plus engine. It could even be a legacy engine because they started adding the Bluetooth receivers into the legacy engine so that basically this app could control any engine that was out there. Now this particular app does have limited functionality so again it's the same type of thing where yes it can control the engine but you may not get all the features because the app can only do so much and we're gonna talk about at the end of the Lionel section the final uh, system that will be much more robust as far as using an app goes but for right now this is what we have so the app allows, as long as you're connected to the locomotive with the Bluetooth app, uh, and you can only now connect to the one locomotive at a time with this app, the way it's currently designed, because it's one single Bluetooth connection from your device over to whatever locomotive you're controlling. You can stop connection onto a locomotive and reconnect to a different locomotive if you wanted to, but you can't simultaneously control them with the app right now. Um, it has some basic controls. You've got horn and bell and crew talk and front and rear couplers, sound, forward, reverse, and the speed control, of course. It also has, later on, they, they added in voice control. The voice control is through the app, not, through the, uh, not controlled by the engine. So uh, any engine that has Bluetooth control, you can also control with voice. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty basic. And again... This Bluetooth app can control Line Chief, Line Chief Plus, and Legacy uh, engines at the time when they started introducing Legacy engines with the Bluetooth receiver in it. If you want some more in-depth knowledge on this, I did do a, a video uh, quite a while ago on the um, Line Chief app that you can go look at, and it goes into all the details of, of this particular app. But um, just mentioning that this is one of the uh, control systems that came out and if all you have on your uh, collection or layout are Bluetooth equipped engines you actually do not need to buy any kind of command control system or any other system besides uh, the engine itself and you download this free app and you can control it with your iPad or iPhone and you don't really need to worry about buying extra hardware. So this is another way to get into the system quickly if you wanted to without spending a lot of money on hardware if you're not sure what to do first. This is free and all you have to do is pick an engine that has Bluetooth in it. And again, the main thing is on all the boxes it always will have the Bluetooth symbol if the engine is equipped with Bluetooth so you can always look at that or you know check the engine's documentation or something like that. All right, guys, so now we're in uh, 2019, and Lionel decides to release a new Lion Chief line called Lion Chief Plus 2.0. And so all these were, were just, again, another iteration of Lion Chief with more advanced features on it. But one of the key things that happened with Lion Chief Plus 2.0 engines is that they got command control inside of them. So now they have electronics that they can actually be controlled by say a cab 1L legacy remote or your 990 cab 2 remote. Uh, so those could now control Lion Chief Plus 2 engines. You still had Bluetooth control on those engines, so if you wanted to use the Lion Chief app we just talked about, you could do that. You could still use the universal remote because that has uh, the capability for Bluetooth in it, right, to, con to uh, control it also. And Lion Chief Plus 2Ls also had the uh, switch uh, on them so that if you wanted to you can control them conventionally so they were kind of the culmination of, of the entire line and chief line that gave you all the different options that you could do with those engines 
and they had you know very close to legacy features on them not quite all legacy features but they had a lot you know of the features that the legacy uh, trains had and they cost a lot less uh, yes they weren't necessarily hundred percent full scale uh, more semi scale and a little less details in their features but they were really nice engines and a lot of people bought them and they become a very popular line because they were a lot less expensive so um, the Lion Chief Plus 2.0 has now replaced the Lion Chief Plus line. Lion Chief Plus engines are no longer manufactured because uh, they're, they're the Plus 2.0s now. But, um, you know, they pretty much have all the different features for control. The one thing you will notice about Lion Chief Plus 2.0 engines is that they do not include a dedicated remote with those engines because you can control them with command now or the Bluetooth app if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, that I don't have any Lion Chief Plus 2 engines because I'm pretty much all legacy engines, but um, they're nice, nice engines that are a lot less expensive and they have pretty much all the features and you can control them with everything that we've pretty much talked about throughout this video. Um, so I can control them conventionally if I don't have a command system. I can control them with my command system, with my legacy um, command system or my Cab 1L system um, and I also can control them with the app so I have a whole bunch of choices on how I can control those engines and that's really all that Line Chief Plus 2.0 is oh and I can control it with the universal remote as we just discussed a couple minutes ago so so it has a whole bunch of features and that's really what it is there's really not much more to say about it except it's just uh, the next line of Line Chief uh, that again incorporated all the different options for controlling the engines. Alright guys, so here we are. We're finally at the end of the Lionel section of the control systems and this is the future. Uh, this is the Lionel Base 3 and Lionel Cab 3 app. And the word app is going to be very important here, so we'll talk about that in a second. But this is the uh, latest control system that is due out. It's not out yet. Uh, hopefully will be this year. It was supposed to be out last year, got delayed. So everybody's hoping we're gonna see it this year. But this is pretty much the culmination of all the control systems we've been talking about throughout this entire video up to this point. And this system uh, should be able to be able to control anything that we throw at it as far as the different types of engines that were made over all the years that Lionel's been producing uh, toy trains. So what this app is, uh, excuse me, what this base or this hardware is going to be able to control are conventional engines, our train master command control engines, so the engines that were running on that cab one base one we talked about, legacy engines that were on the cab 2, base 2 that we talked about, uh, Lion Chief engines, the ones that had the RF frequency remote, Lion Chief Plus engines that had the RF frequency, uh, Lion Chief Plus 2.0 that have uh, Bluetooth capabilities and command capabilities. Um, you'll be able to run um, all these different types of engines uh, in one single uh, system instead of having multiple systems and only being able to run certain engines with certain uh, control systems. So this is the culmination of all of it together. Uh, so basically uh, this is going to have a whole bunch of uh, you know receivers and transmitters inside of it that will uh, be used for Bluetooth, right? The RF receivers, it'll have Wi-Fi in it. Um, so it'll be, be able to control all these different engines that we've been talking about. So this is, you know, really uh, the ultimate in the control system at this point. Um, it'll also uh, be able to hook up to what they call the Lionel layout control system. Now we haven't really talked about that in this video and that's a totally separate type of, of uh, conversation. But the layout control system is a bunch of modules that Lionel has that you can hook up to your uh, command system and you can actually control all kinds of things on your layout through your remote like accessories and uh, switches and things like um, uh, block sections and 
you know, it also has these things called sensor tracks, which the, the trains can run over and then uh, perform commands depending how they're programmed. So that whole system, um, which is available today, and I actually have it on my layout, um, can now be plugged into the base 3 directly. It'll have ports on it, and you won't have to have a separate uh, Wi-Fi module and um, power supply and everything just for the L to add on the LCS system. So right now for the LCS system you have to add a cable onto your legacy base on the serial port and that is a Y cable that has a power supply and then one cable that goes out to the, the first module in the LCS system. You also have to have a separate Wi-Fi module if you want to use Wi-Fi right now and that's all going to be built into this one uh, base here called the base 3. Now the one difference is that with this system that they're going to release, they will not have an actual CAB3 remote, a physical handheld remote that goes with it. It's going to be controlled by the CAB3 app instead. And you know, there's a couple reasons for this. First of all, the legacy remote, which has that LC display, is you know has a lot of obsolete components you can't get anymore. It'd be very expensive for them to create a brand new remote. And honestly, the app is customizable at any point in the future for new features and functionality. So it's just a much better way to go. So you can see some pictures here of the app over on this side that you can use on your phone or tablet. And it will have all the controls that you're used to with your legacy uh, controller. Um, so, uh, and the other thing about it is you won't have to have different apps for all the different types of trains. So. Uh, it'll have a very similar uh, part in the app that will control your Lion Chief. So kind of like that um, Lion Chief Bluetooth app I showed you before, it'll be similar to that where you can control those engines, Lion Chief, uh, Lion Chief Plus, Lion Chief Plus 2.0s, right? If, they're, if you're running it under Bluetooth, it's a Bluetooth type of engine, you can use the part of the app that has that and the way the design looks right now is that you can flop between two different tabs and switch between them so you'll be able to run legacy engines and uh, you know line chief engines and everything all at the same time using one single uh, handheld app now what they did do though is they did allow uh, legacy remotes so that CAB2 remote we talked about earlier and the CAB1L to connect to the base 3. So if you do have those remotes and you do like handheld remotes better, you can use those with the base 3. So again, they're sort of making it compatible with those. Even though they're not making a dedicated CAB3 remote, they're allowing legacy remotes to connect to it. So what that means is that you could uh, use your existing CAB2 remote, the one with the LCD screen, or you could go find one on the secondary market if you wanted one. Or you could use the CAB1L remote that you see in the picture right here. And that is the reason, if you remember when I was talking about the CAB1L system, that's the reason they're still making this remote. Remember I told you the base was discontinued, but they were still making a remote. And this is the reason why. A remote, if you want a handheld, they're going to have one that you can have that works with the base 3. Now it doesn't have all the features and functions, right, because it's not an LCD remote, so th there's a limitation to it if you're running legacy engines, but you'll get most of the features that you probably want, and if you like a handheld remote, that'll work perfectly fine with the base 3. This obviously is a lot cheaper, uh, not cheaper, but a lot easier to make because obviously it's not using LCD screens, outdated technology, it's just a series of physical buttons you know, and they can pro program the software that goes with it. So obviously it's very easy for this to connect to the base 3 and to be able to control things as opposed to coming up with a brand new remote which would probably be just so expensive like none of us would buy it, right? The remote would be a thousand dollars just because of the having to recreate a brand new remote from scratch. So that's the way it's going to work. Um, and as I said, the, the greatest part about this is all we, we'll be able to control everything that we need to from one single place. Uh, the other thing it'll be able to do is because it'll have Wi-Fi built into it, you'll be able to update this much easier than the current systems. So for instance, on the legacy 
system today to update it you have to actually download some files from the website you've got to use this u little utility tool on your PC and you've got to create uh, modules with these rewritable little modules physical modules and then you have to put them and load them onto the base and the uh, controller so it's a process it's not hard but it is a process and this is going to be much easier where you can just through Wi-Fi update the base 3 if you needed to and obviously the cab 3 app is just going to be updated on the app store so it'll be much easier uh, to actually do updates on all these systems now um, the other thing is you're eliminating a couple of power supplies like I said with the LCS system um, they are planning to have a port on here so that if you do have the older engine modules for your engines you could actually load them in so if you are not familiar with that the legacy engines came with these little modules physical modules that you plugged into the uh, uh, remote so that you could load all the engines information in there instead of having to manually enter all that information into the remote um, if you have today's LCS system with the sensor track, the sensor tracks actually do it automatically if you just run the engine over the track. But if you don't, and you still have those old modules and you want to load one in, they are supposedly going to have a port on it to be able to do that. Now, of course, we haven't seen the final version yet. It hasn't been released. But if they follow through with everything that they advertised, then that would be in there too. So... I am pretty excited about the base 3 because this will allow um, all the different engines that I have from all the different lines to sort of come together in a single control system. And I, the app looks, from visually from looking at it, it looks pretty good. Like if you look at the app right here, it's kind of laid out just like the legacy remote is. Same sort of basic layout and I think it'll be pretty easy to control and again it's you know now we're using something different here so we're probably my guess is they're using Wi-Fi between the uh, your phone or tablet and the base which will be a much better connection than Bluetooth connection right so uh, I think there's going to be some significant improvements here uh, just for control walking around especially of a large layout or something like that and plus other people can download the app and you're, it's almost like you're creating instant remotes if you have people over to your house to control the trains. So that's kind of cool too. You don't actually have a whole bunch of physical remotes anymore if you don't want to. Uh, but like I said, if you like the physical remotes, we, there will be two, the, the Cab 2 and the Cab 1L, that can connect to this base and they will work just fine also. So this is pretty exciting and hopefully this will be out this year and then we'll have another video on that when it actually comes out and see how it all works. But this is the final uh, control system uh, that will be released uh, from Lionel that should be able to control their complete entire line of uh, engines that they've released over all these decades that they've been making model trains. Alright guys. I don't know if you're as tired as I am because that was a lot of information to cover on all these different control systems that Lionel has put out throughout the decades. Um, I hope it made it a little clearer. Um, like I said at the end of this video, after we get through the MTH side of the uh, control systems, uh, we will have a uh, sort of a summary of all these control systems and what they can and cannot control. Uh, that will hopefully make it pretty clear when you're going to either buy a control system or buy an engine. So, so that's where we are right now. But I have got to go take a nap because this was a that was exhausting uh, going through all that information, and uh, I don't even want to start on the MTH side until I get some rest, and then uh, we'll start up again and finish out the uh, control systems on the MTH side, and then we'll come up with our final summary. So I hope you're still sticking with me, haven't fallen asleep yet, but. Uh, I think in the end, uh, this is going to be a great video for people that just want to understand all the different control systems. So, we'll be back.